All right, Brad Holmes breaks his silence on Detroit Lions draft situation. Let's talk about it. I think they have some type of draft form where, I guess, you know, people don't know, the combine is just not about judging talent. A lot of times, that's where the foundation of trades, you know, basically trade talks go down. But uh, reading uh, Carlos Monoreza, whatever his name is, nobody likes Carlos, but I, I would think most Detroit Lions fans, Pistons fans, Put me in his position because I'm objective. I'm not a homer. I'm not going to kiss no ass. I'm going to tell you straight like it is. So I'm pretty much sure people think me and Carlos in the same boat because I ain't lying and kissing no ass. All right. Um, about the lines. And that's how I approach life too. So got that many friends neither. And I can care less about that. Like apples and cream and the thing. Yeah. Boy. Boy, it's a problem. But let's talk about what he said. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, bell icon button, share the video. And he said it's fine. It's a fine line of having confidence and overconfidence. Um, Holmes told about 40 t attendees of the forum. It's important to have some form of humility about yourself. I think it's important to embrace uncertainty and have humility in, ter humility. in terms of, an, for example, when I walk into a draft meeting, I have humility to know that I don't have all the answers. But everybody in the room has pieces of the answers. Um, I uh, went on to say that would be the first time anyone sees what answers Holmes and his staff come up with in the draft. The two, the only two certainties seem to be Holmes will listen to everyone's input and the draft starts and ends as a game of projections. Quote from Brad Holmes, so as a decision maker, you have got to be a great listener and make sure you put all those pieces together. Make the best choices, he said. In our line of work, is tough because you always have to predict the future and plan or project down the road. So having those traits to project obviously always uh, bodes well. And then also, uh, I talk about, you know, you can't trust everybody in the draft room. You know, but I talk about, you know, if he mess up this draft, I don't think it really matters. Year one, you draft in year two. You won't know if somebody mess up a draft till down the road. Look at the Pistons. I knew Killian wasn't shit, but he got hurt. But look, they hit on Isaiah Stewart, it looked like, Sadiq Bay, and Saban Lee. So it takes time to really know about the draft. But at the end of the day, he tell he didn't tell us nothing we already didn't know. We're talking about a first year guy who got a lot of guys' experience around him. Dan Campbell had experience of learning how to draft from um from Sean Payton. Um old boy that came from that played with the Cle that uh did the Cleveland Browns, I forget his name. He got some experience. He got his homeboy next to him from the Rams who, who who got experience working with him. So, obviously, he's going to delegate, you know, some part of his drafting, you know what I'm saying, to uh, to, to his boys. And what happened, I'm going to bring this up, what happened with Matt Millen, he, he delegated to the wrong people. And people don't know that, well, something more, if you watch my channel, often I say this all the time, he was delegating to Martin Mayhew and, and Tom Lewan. You know, that's who he was delegating to. And that, them, the, them the guys, he said, when I was, you know, when I wanted to take, and this is his, what he said to uh, Peter Queen and SI a few years ago, I did a video on it. But what he said was, when I wanted to take, uh, I think he said, when I want to take DeMarcus Ware over, you know, uh, Carlos, uh, not Carlos, it was Charles Rogers just passed away with last year. I think it was last year before the pandemic or year before, rest in poverty, him. Um, basically, what he said, when I, uh, when I wanted to draft, you know, Demarcus Ware over Carlos Rogers. They, I mean, Charles Rogers. They pushed me towards. You know, he said they put. You know, Mayhew and Luan pushed him towards drafting Charles Rogers over Demarcus Ware. He said I was going to draft Demarcus Ware, and um, nobody really seen that Matt Miller would be that bad. Well, I'm going to say nobody seen that, but nobody how offensive he would be as a defensive guy. Nobody really seen that. And then, you know, they 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 go 0 and 16, and Mr. Ford don't burn the house down. He, for the most part, higher within the program that, that helped him get 0-16. And that was my issue right there. That's when I knew he was an idiot. But, um, but I mean, yeah, he could delegate to a lot of different people in that situation, but they got the right answers. You know, if they ain't got the right answer, you're not going to be successful. And just looking at it, if you're starting over the rebuild, if you, you know, apparently he was one of the people that strongly believed in Jared Goff. Which I don't know how you still can believe in Jared Goff coming from a better situation in LA, which he didn't have everything he needed as far as the offensive line. But my thing is, they're gonna they're gonna stick with Jared Goff. I'm no dummy, you know. I know they're gonna stick with Jared Goff. Um, you know, 
I'm really I'm really not surprised by that, but I mean for me it's okay. You know, when I when people come in here and, and they wouldn't got rid of Matthew Stafford neither less Matthew wanted to go. When I get in here and you talking about a total rebuild, and that's how they approaching it, the number one thing let me know when they, when they what they do with the quarterback position. So if his long term move is to believe in Jared Goff and Jared Goff wasn't a throw in, then they gonna stick with Jared Goff. And in my opinion, I'm just saying I'm I I ain't got all the answers, you know. I think uh I think it's a mistake. And I've been preaching this for the last four or five years since I had the channel. However long we had, it was a four years. I've been saying about two or three years that they gotta find a, the next quarterback that can transcend the issues of Detroit Lions and the curse of Detroit Lions. But um, you know, it, it is what it is. Everybody's gonna have their opinion. But you know, if he does mess up the draft, I don't think it's a make or break because it's a learning experience for him. I mean, um, was it John Dorsey, the dude from uh, the, the the Browns? Him, John Dorsey, they all got a former rapport. Dan Campbell, and that's why I didn't like how they put Dan Campbell and uh, what's old boy name, uh, Brad Holmes together. I didn't like that. So now they both got to kind of find a compromise to what they want to draft and what their philosophy is. I don't like that shit. Bill Belichick is in L.A. I mean, in New England. He got the final say so before we go to Robert Kraft about what type of player he want. Well, that's what you need. If you got not just one guy that got the final say, so two guys like Terry, Jimmy Jam, and Terry Lewis, you know, two guys like Chad and, and for real, you need two guys who got the same mindset. They should let Brad Holmes, if he was the, if he was the guy, let him pick his guy. He didn't pick no Dan Dan Campbell. Tell you that shit right now. And, and there's a couple fears I have, you know, about this regime. Lack of experience is one, but they filled them around with experienced guys, so I'm fine at that. But putting Brad Holmes and Dan Campbell together is one of the mistakes I think they made. So both have to compromise and conform to both of their identities. And I don't think that's right. You know? I don't think that's right. No, but everybody's going to have that opinion. But if you don't draft well this year, I don't think it's an issue. You know, I don't think it's an issue. I mean, that's, that's, that's pretty much on them. But, you know... Is, is he progressively good, good drafting? If he can draft well, you know, he's going to have a, a large percent. I think if you draft well, I think you got an 85, 80% chance of being successful in a city. You know, at one point, you could probably say 90% chance. But you can draft well and draft and guys get injured. If he can draft well, he will more than build foundation. He will build, he will build a structure of... If they can draft, well, I don't want to say because it it's him, Dan Quinn, you no, know, um, Mahomes, Dan Quill, Dorsey, or the whole them. If they can uh, draft well, if they can draft well, it, it's gonna be, it's gonna be to the point where they'll be alright. That's gonna be the structure. It's gonna be the building, the foundation, the structure. The one thing you worry about is putting the roof on. And putting the roof on. All right, we got a championship foundation and structure with drafting. Putting the roof on is, is signing back some of your guys, but putting the roof on is bringing back the right guys and then bringing those veteran free agents that can top off the foundation where it's going to be successful for a long time. So once you build the foundation, look at the Jacks. They built the great foundation. The only mistake was drafting Blake Boyles. They, they built a, a great foundation, and they was able to put Malik Jackson there. They was able to bring in Calais Campbell. They were able to to put the finishing touches on that. So that's not hard. The hard part is drafting the right. And, and it don't mean you go out there and draft um, Barry Sanders, Calvin Johnson, um, uh, 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 Kenny Galladay, uh, or, or you drafting Lewis Delmas, or, or you just, your know, five, seven, eight picks, how many picks you got, don't have to be slim dunk. Can they be guys that can contribute right away? Can they be guys that are rotational players that are like, Okay, eventually, if Ragnar go down, you can plug in, and you can block. You can block for the quarterback. So, are we gonna have guys that can contribute, or eventually, uh, be viable and reliable debt players? That's the million dollar question. That's the draft guys. If you able to draft a guy like Larry and Waddle, and he can stay healthy, well, he's a guy that can play almost every position across the offensive line, like Terrell Crosby. 
he's an asset. That's a great draft because we're going to have injuries. You know, so can this guy continue to develop, get better, and stand in? You know, for guys, so you're talking about drafting stars, drafting contributors that's going to be able to start and contribute and be solid players, and drafting depth guys and develop these guys. That's the question. A lot of the guys that, um, a lot of the guys that, um, a lot of the guys that, um, was drafted over the last, I don't know, uh, 20 years, you know, I believe they probably would have been great players had had the str had they been developed a lot better. You know. Had they been developed a lot better, they would probably would have went in and, 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 and been better and better players. But or they had better coaches. They probably would have been they would have probably been in a better position to succeed. So I don't think the players that fell fell Detroit Lions has been drafted over the last twenty years. I think the system of the Detroit Lions have failed the players and, and developed guys. And then obviously it's just in my whole thing with with Brad Holmes, before we get flamboyant and sexy and drafting, to me it's just just make the easy move. You know, you going down the you you going down the uh the court on a three on one, three on two. You know, if anybody play basketball, you come down the court, depending on how the defense play. You jump stop or you stop at the at, at the at the free throw line. You make the right pass. Make the simple pass. Make make the t the simple pass. That's that's all people ask him. Make the simple pass. And what I mean by that, translating to the Lions, is simply we got a situation where Nick Fairley and Dominic Sue not coming back the next year. Draft here and down. We got a situation where we can't come to an agreement. On a Dominic and Sue's contract, trade him and get something for him. You have a situation where the quarterback sucked and didn't get over the hump, trade that motherfucker. Same thing with the Pistons. You know, with the Pistons, it was just about not making a simple play for years. Make the simple move. And when we start making the right move, then we can go into the flamboyant, the flashy, the sexy, the beautiful things. You know, but that's my only thing. My only hope for Brad Holmes is just to make the right move. If he can make the right move, then we're gonna be in excellent in excellent condition. That's my opinion. We we gonna we gonna be in beautiful position. You know, like you got a situation with, with, with Eric Ebron. You know, draft fucking old Dale if you like a pet. They just over the years, man, I, I could have did a lot better job than them. Give me a capologist and watch me go. But that's just my biggest problem. They just make, they just try to be the smartest guy in the room. You don't have to be. You know, Aaron Donald, he's too small. Well, fucking it, Warren Sapp was too small. Can we forget Warren Sapp was undersized. If this dude is manhandling guys on the college level, then then well, what's the male function? And they just they just do stupid things, you know. But for Brad Holmes, it's about being simple. That's all it's about, being simple, being plain, you get there. And just my worries is, you know, they sit here and they get Jared Goff and they do some shit like 6 and 10, 7 and 9, 5 and, 5 and 11, 4 and 12, and they be in the same fucking position they is next year. We're in a 7, 5 spot. And you miss out on a Herbert, a Tua, a, 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 um, a Joe Burrows, or you miss out on a Zach Wilson, a Trevor Lawrence. Jared Goff is really, in my mind, into a proven different, a lateral move. You still gonna be in that ten to five range when you draft him. And every year they talk about we might trade up for Kyler Murray. Some rumors went out there they may trade up for Kyler Murray. You didn't. He's a fucking superstar. Last year you didn't use in a position to take uh Justin Herbert or Tua. You didn't. You drafted Jeff fucking Okuda. And and and, and, and TJ Hawkinson is not gonna turn the franchise around. No tight end has turned the franchise around. So, you know, over the years, they passed up. Ed, I'm not saying Hawkinson a bad player. They passed up Ed Oliver, Devin Bush. They passed up these players for cornerbacks and tight ends, which are not generational positions. When you're talking about generational position, you're talking about the quarterback position. That's been the number one issue for the last 20 fucking years. I mean, past 20 years. That's been the issue. You don't want to draft a quarterback 
Because you can't evaluate because Rodney P, Andre Ware, Charlie Beach, all those guys. That's the, if somebody don't come, come in and figure that out as far as homes in the first two years, he's stupid. And if they pass up this year, they got, a, they got an opportunity to take Justin Fields or Trevor Lawrence, or not Trevor Lawrence, or, or um, Trey Lance, S7 or move up to get him. Watch what I tell you. If they pass on the quarterback, they're going to be fantastic in the National Football League. They're going to go on to be some fucking amazing talent. I guarantee you if they keep passing, if they pass on one of them, they're going to be a great or a great play, a great talent. Or if they go before them, one or both of them are going to be great talent. And that's the issue. Anybody come in and look at Detroit Lions. When Matt Miller came in, he never fixed the issue. Joey Harrington was a buzz. They had John Kitten in some of them years, whatever. You know, you're going, the number one issue for the Lions ever since Bobby Lane left, to my knowledge, has been able to go out there and find a fucking quarterback. Nope. You had Barry Sand. You had great generation. None of these stupid fans can open their eyes. What's been the one thing that's in the 90s? It was the quarterback position. In the 2000s, it was the quarterback position. If you were able to find you with Aaron Rodgers, Tom Brady, and Peyton Manning, this team goes for, what, four or five wins this year? They're they easily a nine or ten win team if you put the structure around them. It's common sense. That's the one thing the Lions been missing. It's like you making chili. You're like, uh, uh, chili don't taste right. We ain't got no fucking kidney beans in there. You ain't got no, you ain't, you ain't got no chili beans. You ain't got no beans in there. Of course it's not. Or you, you know, you talking about man, hamburger helper. You ain't got no hamburger. Uh, you know, possibly, uh, I'm missing something. That's what it is. You want to play football? Oh, we missing something. Oh, we ain't got no football. And that's what the, the Lions fans don't understand. If they can't find a generational quarterback, or they can't develop a good quarterback. If it ain't golf, it ain't nobody this year or next year. This team ain't going nowhere. And if I were to bring, build a team that can win a championship, because there's never been a team that can win a championship year in and year out or, or have a contender without a quarterback, to my knowledge. The Bears had a great 85 Bears. I'm going on longer than I thought I would. Way long. The 85 Bears. Okay, hear me out. The 85 Bears. Great defense. Not a great quarterback. McMahon was okay. They they never went back. They never recaptured that flame. The Ravens, the first Ravens seen them win with the with, with Ray Lewis. Great defense, Chris McAllister, uh, Ray Lewis, Avery wasn't a part of that team. People gotta remember. Still in college or whatever he was at. High school, whatever. Great defense. Couldn't come back and repeat. Tampa Bay Bucks with Derek Brooks, Warren Sapp. They had Brian, Brad Johnson. Trent Different was the Ravens. They had Brad Johnson, right? Had one good year run. After that, they never recreate that magic. The quarterback is the key to being serious threats a year in year out. Why is the Green Bay always hyped up every year? Because they got Aaron Rodgers. Why did the New England go in and win year around? They got Tom Brady. Why is Peyton Manning hyped up every year? They had Peyton Manning. The coach hyped up. They had Peyton Manning. That is the key to generational, to be contenders for the next five, ten years, however the quarterback is going to be there. That's the key. Look at the Dallas Cowboys. Without that, whatever. You take Russell Wilson off of them Seattle Seahawks team, they don't win a championship with, with Matt Flynn. That is the key. The key to generational, to year in and year out contenders is a generational quarterback. And if they pass on these quarterbacks and Trey Lance go be a generational talent, he able to lift somebody. Hi, yeah, my Teddy Brendan voice. Come on, they pass up on Kyler Murray. They passed up on Joe Burrow. I mean, excuse me, um, Justin Herbert and, and, uh, and Tua. They're going to understand. You're going to learn, Trey. And that's just common sense, man. But hey, let me know what you guys think. Don't forget, we on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. You can reach out if you have a business question, inquire, response, your video request. All my social media links are description. Twitter's the fastest way. Facebook, Instagram. Want to make a financial donation? Cash App, CJ Good 313. That's in the description. PayPal link in the description as well. Best way to donate. Share, share the video. Appreciate the love and support. Let me know what you guys think about the video about Brad Holmes. We went a little bit longer than I thought we would go. Because I know the business is. Peace.